Good morning, everybody. Hope all is well this morning. This morning, I want to talk to you about learning to avoid any ungodly thoughts. <clears throat> learning to avoid any ungodly thought. And I want to start off this morning in the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. So let me go ahead and read it. <clears throat> Whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, I'm going to read it again. Whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, I want to um, kind of dig into this scripture and pull some things out of this, some, some revelation out of the scripture. But before I do that, I want to go and to another scripture before I come back here. So let's go to uh, John 21, verse 25. And it reads like this. <clears throat> and, the very, and, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, that if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the whole world itself could not contain the books that should be written therein. So he says, there are so many things that Jesus did so many things that this book can contain that he says that this it would say more books than this whole world could contain to be to uh, for, to explain all the things that Jesus did what he could do and what he still is doing and Jesus is the word so what am I trying to say there are so much things that this word can do that he can't even put it in a book that it would take several books that it would take enough books to fill this entire planet with books in order to tell you what this word can do. Because this word has done some things, this word is doing some things, and it will continue to do some things. So therefore, what God had to do is, God had to give you new revelation from old information. Old scriptures that you know, God had to give more revelation from the same thing you know. That's how the, see the word of God is pregnant. Oh, the word may mean one thing as you read it in contents, but you may come back later and it means something else. In other words, you'll get something else out of it and come back another time and there's something else in that word because the Holy Ghost came to reveal things to us, to give us revelation, glory to God. And he'll give us new revelation even from old familiar information. Now with that, let me go forward, we're going back really to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, because I want to show you something here. Now, he said, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. We're going to deal with that. Let me go forward. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ. The glorious gospel of Christ. Now, we know the glorious gospel is talking about the glorious good news. The glorious good news. When I see the thing of glory, I think of something that's manifested. I like to say the manifested good news of Christ. Now, who is Christ? Jesus Christ. Well, no, Jesus isn't really, his last name was not Christ. Let me say it like this. Jesus the Christ. Because Christ is... It's not Jesus' last name, as we should know that by now. But if you don't, I'm let you know it today. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is what got on Jesus. Glory to God. See, if you go to the book of Isaiah 10, 27, it talks about the very removing, yoke-destroying power of God because of the anointing. And Christ is the English word for the anointing. Well, the anointing is the power of God. It is the ability of God getting on man. So when you say Jesus Christ, you say Jesus, the man with the power. Jesus, the man with the ability. Jesus, the man with the anointing. Glory to God. So uh, that's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ or the illumination of the glorious gospel of the power of God. Let me get to say that again. The light of the, uh, of the glorious gospel of the power of God, who is the image of God. 
shall shine unto them. To Satan blind the minds of them which believe not, because he doesn't want you to know that there is a power of God that can shine onto you, that can shine through you, and that can get on you. So the God of this world has blinded the minds of them and blinded the minds of people who don't believe so that the power of God, the anointing of God, and the ability of God can get on those people. Glory to God. What am I giving God good for? Revelation. 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 Satan wants to blind your mind so you don't know about the power of God. I never forget when my man of God first started preaching about the anointing 20 so odd years ago, 24, whatever it may be. And I said, the anointing, is that real? I mean, does it really exist? I mean, I, I, I just didn't know. I mean, I, and I was skeptical. I mean, I just didn't believe. What is this anointing he's talking about? And so one day God told me, uh, he was talking about something to me. He told me about something. And he says, yeah, once the anointing increased on your life. That's what God said. So when God said it, I knew that it was real. Glory to God. So I want to go ahead and show you. So he blinds the mind of them. So the anointing, or so the good news of the anointing, will not shine unto us. Because that's good news. To know you got operating the power of God. That's good news. To know you got operating the burden removing your destroying power of God. That's good news, glory to God. Now, so he blinds the minds of them. Now, he doesn't blind your mind, you know, like putting something in front of your eyes. He doesn't blind your mind with what you can't see. Satan blinds your minds with what you do see. Let me say that again. Satan blinds your mind with what you do see. Because, you know, we want to understand everything. And, and you know, we're, we're, we're uh, you know, in this natural world. We want to see things and understand things. So he puts something in your mind that you can see to blind it. That's what he does. He put things in your eyes to blind your mind. He put things in your ears to blind your mind. He put things in your thoughts to blind your mind. Let's go take a look at what he did. He's been doing that since day one, from the beginning. So I want to go back to Genesis and show you what I'm talking about. So go to Genesis 3. Where, uh, uh, we're going to be starting reading in verse 1. We're going to take it down to 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. He's more subtle, more crafty, and more tricky. He blinds minds. Watch this. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? What did he do? He's just sowing uh, doubt. Did God really say this? He's sowing doubt. So have God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now she knew what God said, but the Satan already sowed a little bit of doubt, trying to cause confusion by giving the mind an intrusion with other words. Go ahead, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's a direct con a contradiction to what God said. That's what he's doing today. Did God say that you need to do it this way? God Did God say you needed to do it that way? Did God say that uh, you, need to, you should be give? You should give? Did God say this is what you should marry, who you should marry? Did God, he showed doubt, and then he comes up with, with direct contradiction. The serpent says to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God does know. And the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What happened? So he came first with a word of doubt. Then he came with a direct word of contradiction. And the woman was holding conversation and communication with him, which means she was considering what he had to say. Verse 6. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eyes, what happened? He put something in her eyes. He put something in her eyes. And the tree be desired to make one wise. What happened? He put something in her mind, something in her thoughts, something in her eyes, something in her thoughts, something in her mind. <clears throat> and a tree to be desired to make one wise 
she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also with her husband to uh, with her, gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. So what did he do? He came in first to her ear gate. Did God say this? You should not surely die. Was that ear gate? Then she looked at the tree, eye gates into your spirit. Then the um the thoughts, four gates, ears, eyes, thoughts, and a woman disobeyed God. And that's what he wants to do right now. He wants to get in your ears. He wants to put something in your ears. He wants to put something in your eyes. He wants to put something in your thoughts. So that you disobey God. And when a woman and Adam and Eve disobeyed God, the power of God came off of them. The anointing of God came off of them. Who they lost their identity in God. And what, that's what he wants to do with us. He doesn't want to know the power that we can walk in. And the ability that we can walk in. Because he wants to put something in our eyes. Put something in our ears. Put something in our thoughts. So we doubt. And we don't do exactly the way God said to do it. How he said to do it. When he said to do it. And the power of God will come off of us. That's the trick of the enemy. That's the trick of the enemy. Right there. How? Glory. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now watch. Now. Now, let's do this. Let's go to uh, let's go to Matthew 4. I want to show you how we did the same thing with uh, Jesus. Now look what we did with Jesus. Matthew 4. I'm going to skip around. You'll see. Watch. Verse 1. Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he afterward a hungry. Yeah, you'd be hungry after 40 days, after 40 hours. You'd be hungry. But he did 40 days and 40 nights. And when the tempter came, or when Satan came, he said, here Gates, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. I Gates. Command these stones, he had to see the stones, ears, if thou be the Son of God. First of all, he wanted to question who he was. If you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread, knowing that he was hungry. What did he do? He came, put something in his ears. He came, put something in his eyes. He came because he didn't want the power of God to be in operation in the life of Jesus. Keep going forward. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and set them upon the pinnacle of the temple. Why do you think he took them up there? So you can see. And let me tell you something. Don't think of the devil. You know, come on, Jesus. Let's go up here. Let me show you something. No. When he took him up there, I believe he turned out he got in his mind. When he, when he, uh, when he uh, showed him the, the stones and told him to make it be bread, I think he just got in his mind. Just like he tried to just get in your mind. If he shows up, you're not going to follow him. If he shows up, you're not going to listen to him. But if he get in your mind, he get in your mind, put something in your eyes, and put something in your ears, he's more subtle and more crafty than anything that we've ever dealt with. Let me go forward. Now, so it took him, so the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, there you go again, put some down in there. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. What happened? He took him up, to, uh, showed this to him, he spoke to his mind, and he spoke to his ears, so something would go in his mind contrary to the things of God. Go to the next one, verse 8. Again, the devil taking them up into the exceeding high mountains and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He showed it to him in his eyes and said unto him in his ears, All these things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship you, worship me. So that's how Satan operates. Satan wants to put something in your eye gates. Something wants to put something in your ears. Something wants to, Satan wants to put something in your mind to get you uh, uh, so that you don't believe the glorious gospel of God. See, he wants to tell you if God supplied all your needs according to his riches and glory, how come you got more bills than you got money? If God is a healer, how come you're going in sickness and the pain in your body? 
If God does this, how come that? If God does that, he shows you something what to rob you from believing the most high God. That's his, that's his method of operation. That's what he does. That's what he does. That's what he does. Now, let's go to James. Go to James. We're going to look at this now. We're going to look at the book of James. Now watch this. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. The then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Now, let me show you this. Let me show you. We're going to go to another scripture. We're going to go to, uh, where are we going? We're going to go to Corinthians. And I want to go back to James. I'm almost finished. I won't be here long today. Watch this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. All right. Now watch this. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man don't know the things of God, because they're spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Now listen to this. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. At home, I need you to say this with me. I have the mind of Christ. Say it again at home. I have the mind of Christ. Now we talked about what Christ is. Christ is the burden removing, the yoke destroying power of God. I have of the mind of Christ. I have a mind that removes burdens. I have a mind that destroys yokes. I have a mind that operates in the power of God. Glory to God. I don't care what gets in my eye gate. I don't care what gets in my ear gate. I don't care what gets in my mind. My mind removes the burden and my mind destroys the yokes. Let me show it to you. Go forward. We're going back forward to James, where we just came from, right? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Let me break this down. There's four things happening here. Every man is tempted, that's one. When he's drawn away, that's two. Of his own lust, there's lusting or strong desire. Lust is a strong desire, that's three. And enticed, that's four. Now, who's doing the tempting? Satan or the wicked forces. Who's doing the drawing away? Satan or the wicked forces. Who's doing the uh, enticing? Satan and the wicked forces. And who's doing the lusting or the strong desires? We are. We are. We're doing the strong uh, uh, lusting, the strong uh, uh, desire. We is us. So he says, then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. But let me tell you something, people of God. You see, lust has to be conceived. Something gets you. See, you don't get tempted until you see something. You don't get tempted until you hear something. Something has to draw you away. Something has to entice you. Something has to get in your eyes. Something has to get in your ears. Something has to get in your mind to tempt you, to draw you away, to entice you. And when that lust or when that strong desire is conceived, but we got to get rid of that strong desire. It says when lust is conceived or when that strong desire is conceived, it brings forth sin. But we have the mind of Christ, a mind that removes burdens, a mind that destroys yokes, a mind with the power of God. So when the tempter comes with something in our eyes, something in our ears, something in our mind to tempt us, to draw us away, to entice us, we have to not let it conceive, but we have to abort the thought. You can't let see, you don't, you're not tempted by something. A verse has to be in your thoughts. See, nothing can draw you away. It first has to get in your thoughts. See, nothing can entice you. It first has to get in your thoughts. But if you have the mind of Christ, if your mind has the power of God on it, if your mind knows how to remove burdens before the burdens get there, Destroy yokes before you get yoked up. He says, when verse 15, James 1 15, when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. I don't want the sin to go forth because the sin forth brings forth death. So I need to stop the death. 
How do I stop the death? I got to stop the sin. How do I stop the sin? I stop the conception. How do I stop the conception? Conception, I abort the fort. How's that? With the bird removing, yoke destroying, power of God. That's on my mind. That, that's how I do it. Satan comes and says, look at that pretty little thing right there. Oh, she sure got a good look on her. And I said, yeah, but God gave me one woman, one wife. I'm happy with my wife, and I'm, and I'm happy with God gave me. What happened? I just aborted the fort. Satan told me, you're going to be sick all the days of your life. This pain and this, 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 this uh, diagnosis, I'm going to be with you all the days of my life. And he has shown me the pain. He'll let me feel the pain. He'll say it to my ears. But I have to come back. I can't receive that for it. I can't concentrate by looking at the pain and by, uh, by concentrating on the pain and looking at the, the symptoms. I have to say, my God says that he would, if I, if I, uh, if I seek him, crave him, require the necessity of his face and turn from wicked ways, that I, he would heal my, heal my, feed my sin and heal my land. What happened? I just aborted that thought. I just aborted that thought. Then the bill comes in, and I look at all those zeros on the bill, and I look at that the, the, at the bank account, and the zeros on the bill are bigger than the zeros on the bank account. But I instead of um, I'm looking, seeing it with my eye gates. I'm hearing phone calls up with my ear gates. But I have to abort any ungodly thought because there's a power that God wants to put on me. And the power comes when I say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory formed by Christ Jesus. That's how you get the power of God in your life. That's how you start aborting the thoughts. That's how you get God moving in your life. Because let me tell you something, baby. When you got the mind of Christ, you'll abort the thought. You'll stop these thoughts from keeping you from operating in the power of God. See, he doesn't want the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. The light of the glorious gospel of the power of God to shine unto you. But let it shine, glory to God. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. When he comes with something in your eyes, when he comes with something in your ears, when he comes with something in your thoughts, you got to come with something from the belly, something from the spirit that contradicts what he has to say, what he has to show you, what he has for you to hear. Because we have the mind of Christ. Because we have the mind of of Christ. People of God, you can't be moved by what you see. You can't be moved by what you hear. You can't by, be moved by what you think because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when something comes in my ear, contrary to what I'm believing God for, then I don't need to look at that because that will start talking to me just like the fig tree talked to Jesus when Jesus came and answered and said, no man will eat of you ever again. See, the thoughts going to come when the bills, you look at them bills, the bills are going to say, you got some financial issues now, bro. But I'm going to say, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. The blessing of the Lord make it rich and there's no sorrow with it. What happened? I bore that for and let the power rise. The cloud of the glory is gospel of Christ. The power of God. The image of God. Let it arise. Let it arise. Let it rise up. Let it rise up. Let it rise up. People of God, you got to watch what goes in your ears. You got to watch what goes in your eyes. You got to watch what gets in your thoughts. And you have to abort, abort all ungodly thoughts. If it's an ungodly thought, you must abort. How? With the word of God. It's the most important thing, people. It's the most important thing. God left us his word. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, down. And then Jesus left. Now he's on the inside of us. He sent the Holy Spirit down. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. Glory to God. But, and, and, but now he sent the Holy Spirit down. He's left us his word. He left us his word. And he said, the God of this world wants to blind the minds of them 
that believe not. Believe not what? The word. What stops you from believing the word? What you see. What stops you from believing the word? What you hear. What stops you from believing the word? What you think. You got to get your thoughts out of the way, your hearing out of the way, your eyes out of the way, and let faith come, let faith come in by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. People of God, we're in spiritual warfare. We're in spiritual warfare. And we got to learn how to fight. You can't be, you know, you don't want to go over to uh, uh, one of these little Iraq somewhere uh, or Afghanistan somewhere or wherever you may go without any weaponry. Likewise, you know, you can't live in this day and time without any weaponry. You got to have your weaponry. You got to have the word of God. You got to learn how to avoid the thoughts. He talks about the fiery darts of the wicked. What are those fiery darts? Thoughts. Thoughts. Aim at your thinker. Aim at your thinker. Last scripture, Matthew, verse four. We're gonna see how Jesus did it, and, we're gonna, and that'll be that. Watch this. Look how Jesus did. Let's go through Matthew again. And when the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be the Son of God." Command these stones to be made bread. But he answered, or Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's how man lives. See, Jesus couldn't let that thought take root. Jesus had to abort that thought, glory to God, so he could operate in the power of God and resist. Keep going. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash their foot against the stone. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Glory to God. What did Jesus hit him with? The word. What did he hit him with? The word. What you got to hit the enemy with? The word. Don't concentrate on what you see. Concentrate on the word. Don't want to concentrate on what you hear. What do you concentrate on? The word. Don't concentrate on what you think. What do you concentrate on? The word. Glory to God. What is that? That's the bird removing. That's the yoke destroying. The power of God. Because what you see is trying to yoke you up. What you hear is trying to yoke you up. What you think is trying to yoke you up. It'll yoke you up in pornography. It'll yoke you up in drugs and alcohol. It'll yoke you up in an extramarital affair. It'll, it'll yoke you up. But you got to abort the thought with the power of the word. Let me end it with that last verse. Again, the devil taking them up to the exceeding high mountains and show them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He showed them all the kingdoms of the world. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. How enticing. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve. Glory to God. Jesus knew how to abort the thought. Jesus knew that Satan came to blind his mind with what he put in his eye, blind his mind with what he put in his ears, blind his mind with what he put in his thoughts. And it's important for us to know that he wants to blind our mind by putting things in our eyes. Blind our mind, avoiding things in our ears and our thoughts. And it's time for us to start to avoid the thought. People of God, I pray you got something out of that word today. This is something you have to practice. This is something you have to practice. You got to put it in practice. You got to put this thing in practice. It says learning to avoid any ungodly thought. But it's a learning process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. And any of you might try it. But that's okay. You keep on practicing. You keep on practicing. You keep on practicing. When you see something that don't line up with the word, speak the word. You hear something that don't line up with the word, speak the word. You think something that doesn't line up with the word, speak the word. And go on with the power of God. Watch how it, 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 it increases in your life. Praise God. Now, once again, unless you're born again, this will not work for you. 
If you're not born again, you must be born again. So I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus as your first Lord and Savior. Repeat this after me if you if you never received him. Say, Father, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe on Calvary. He took my sins and gave me his righteousness. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for saving me this day. Praise God. Glory to God. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family. And for everyone, I want to give you the opportunity to sow into this ministry, sow into this word, sow into the kingdom of God. It's so important to sow. Number one, you keep us coming forth with the word. Number two, when you give, the Lord will make sure that it's given back to you. See, you don't have to worry about your tomorrows. See, your tomorrows will take care of itself. You give today, and God will take care of your tomorrows. Just like he does for the birds of the air. You never see no bird running around here uh, starving. All right? So we have several ways to give. We have our cash app. That's the dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, then ministries with a capital M. One more time, dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, ministries with a capital M. You can give by check. Make your check payable to WFCM. P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. One more time. P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. Last but not least, you can call us and give that way. Call 770-477-8586. 770-477-8586. People of God, we love you. We thank God for you. We'll see you here Tuesday night at 7 o'clock.